Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello. So I'm going to talk about ingrained habits, belief systems, anything in your life that you've been doing regularly for a long time without really thinking about it that's become part of who you are. I was listening to a little video clip of Joe Dispenza and he was talking about how the body surrenders to the new mind and it made me really think because he was talking about when your mindset shifts how it takes time for the body to catch up and how almost the last bastion is the sort of the body's resistance to the change but what I've also realized is that it's not just the body in the transformational work that I've done, a lot of the time, for me, it's the subconscious, shifting those subconscious patterns. I'll have an insight or an aha moment and I'll understand something differently. But I can see, because I do this <laughs> for a job and I'm very experimental on myself as well, um, I can see how even when I shift my thinking, that quite often the thought patterns, the ingrained belief systems, take a while to filter through. And it takes me observing them and detaching from them, seeing them for what they truly are, to allow them to remove themselves and to pass completely. Some of the things, just for examples, some of the things I've worked on quite a few years in the past now are a belief that, or a fear of being alone. Um, it was actually when I was doing my training over 10 years ago that I realised that I had this deep-seated fear of being alone. And once I'd recognised it, I saw how it permeated every area of my life. And in recognising it, I can still sometimes see when it comes up, but because I'm aware of it, it doesn't have power over me like it used to. Another one that I used to have was a belief that I wasn't supported. And again, it was, it was the most fascinating thing, actually, because again, it happened when I was doing my training. And I did my training in Johannesburg, or part of it I did in Johannesburg, part I did in Cape Town. And I was traveling back from Johannesburg to Botswana. Part of what happens when you, when you have an aha moment and you have a realization that your belief systems, your patterns, all your thinking isn't actually the truth, and you see the truth of it, the really deep truth of it. What happens then, or what I've noticed, I would hate to say this definitely happens, but what I've noticed is the lack of the truth, the opposite of that, almost starts bubbling up more and becomes more intense so that you can face it and let it go truly. So as I was driving back, um, if anyone isn't from South Africa, um, there's quite, especially at the time that I was there, um, hijackings um, and things like that, robberies and things like that were quite commonplace. So I was driving back, my car had Botswana registration on it, so I knew that it was an easy target. And I became aware of this black Audi with black tinted windows kept overtaking me and then slowing down, allowing me to overtake it. And it happened two or three times. And I was living with a question, which is a, was a tool that you can use to step from being in the ego state, being run by your subconscious, into a much more conscious state. And the one that I was living with, because of the realisation I had, was what would it feel like to be supported? So when I became aware of this car behaving strangely, I remember starting thinking, what, just asking the universe, what would it feel like to be supported? At the point when I became aware of it, it pulled up alongside me and just something inside me, I don't know quite, I can't explain it, just made me think, don't look at it, don't acknowledge it, don't make eye contact, because I could see they had their windows down. And it drove next to me for a couple of seconds before we both realised there was a truck coming towards it and it had to pull in. I guess at that stage it realised that I'd noticed it and there was a new, there was a town coming up ahead of us. So it shot off ahead of me and I assumed that it was going to then wait in li um, lie in wait for me somewhere along the route to the Botswana border because this town was the town that was, the, the, it, well, after this town was the Botswana border. But what they didn't realise was there's two ways to the Botswana border. You can go through Clockwing border or my house actually was slightly outside the capital and it was closer to the Ramotswa border. So I normally went a different way. And when I went through Zerus, which was the town, I couldn't see this car anywhere and I was looking out for it. So in my heart, I was hoping that it had gone to the Clockwing border and was waiting along that route, which was the more common route. But actually, and then as I went off towards Ramotswa, I started formulating a plan in my mind. And there's a village, quite a large sort of town, 
before I head off into the bush, before I get to the Ramotswa border. And I knew that that was my last place to just really determine whether this person was meaning me harm or and acting suspiciously, or if it was just me being fanciful. And the whole time I'm doing this, I was asking myself, what would it like feel like to be supported? And trusting that I could let go and I had a plan and that it was okay, I was going to be held by the universe. And I got to this village and um, I know that in this village, there's about two or three roundabouts, one after the other. And after that, there's a shopping centre on the right hand side. So in my mind, I was going to drive over these roundabouts and if this person was around and they were following me, I would drive back through the shopping centre car park and double back on myself. And if they were still following me, then I knew something really suspicious and dodgy was happening and then I needed to find the police. And as I came into this village or town, um, they did, they pulled in behind me and they started flashing their lights at me. But because I kept on asking this question to the universe, um, I mean, I did feel a little bit agitated. I wasn't as calm as I maybe could have been. And, um, but I knew in my heart of hearts that it would be okay. And I did exactly what I planned. I went over the three roundabouts. I pulled into the shopping car park, into the parking area, and I started doubling back on myself. And they did follow me. They went over the roundabouts, into the shopping area, through the car park, and started following me back. So at that point, I decided that I wasn't going to leave this town until I found a policeman. So I doubled back, I went round the roundabout and I started going back because I knew where the police station was. And as I, were going, going along the, as I was going along the road, saying my question to the universe, what would it feel like to be supported? This police van pulled in front of me into the garage um, to my left and I quickly tucked in behind them and pulled to a stop and I went up to them and said, excuse me, but I think somebody's trying to hijack me. Um, and they were amazing. It was just the most beautiful time. They, one guy, this massive policeman, climbed into my car with me. They sent a couple of policemen off to go and try and find the guy. And then the guy, the people in the police van, with their lights flashing, escorted me from the town all the way along the road, which was about a 40 minute drive, um, to the Botswana border and deposited me at the border safe and sound. And I'm sharing this because when we shift something, be it in a habit, um, just a daily habit that you've sort of picked up, a behavioural habit, or if it's a mindset or a belief system, that it throws things up, that challenge, that resist that change. Um, and for me, it was an experience like that. But when that happens and you know that's going to happen and you're aware of it, you can hold it lightly and let it go. You can use one of the questions that I shared with you, but adapt it for your own use. Or you can just know it and just, there's a beautiful saying, let go and let God. And that God being whatever your experience of God is. Um, and just allow it to pass. Because if you attach to it, if you become fearful, if you believe what's coming up, then you get caught in the same pattern and you don't break free. Um, anyway, that's my experience of the shifting of belief systems, of habits, of patterns, and how... They kick up dirt and they kick up resistance. And sometimes the biggest hurdle is overcoming that last piece of resistance to whatever it is that you've held on to for a long time in your life. I hope that this has been beneficial and helpful to you when you decide to change belief systems or habits in your life. Um, I do consciousness coaching. I support people in making this shift from living in a subconscious way and an automated way into living a much more conscious, self-aware way. If you are interested in working with me, either through my online programs, which are on my website, or with me as a coach, a personal coach with you, which will impact your life much more efficiently, then you can find my contact details either through my social media, which the links to that are below, or through my website, which is also the link to that is below. So much love from me to you, and thanks for joining me. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.